my name is Dr. Koheli and I am a pediatric ophthalmologist and a schooling specialist. So, today we will talk about the first time you have come to know of the diagnosis of squint for either your child or for yourself. It means that you have heard first that you have squint. Hai. And many a time what happens is that parents and patients have a lot of questions and at the end of the consultation you might feel that many of them are unanswered. So today we are going to be dealing with a few of the frequently asked questions when you first time hear the diagnosis of squint. So pehle the first question is what is squint? Uh, so the first thing is squint is when both eyes are not looking straight. So when one eye is looking, the other eye is either outwards, that is called exotropia, or it's inwards called isotropia. Now let's just go to the board and let me explain. Now, mostly uh, one of the eyes is focusing, but you may feel that both the eyes are going out, both the eyes are going out sometimes of the day, not all the time. And it's during some periods that one eye goes out and the other eye goes out. So any of that is called exotropia when the eyes go outwards. The eyes going inwards again, sometimes it's both eyes, sometimes you feel that only one eye is going in, sometimes you feel that they are alternating one day, one day, you know, one eye is going in and out. Maybe it's not all the time. Whatever the cause, it's called esotropia when the eyes go in. If the eye goes up, it's called hypertropia. If the eye goes down, it's called hypotropia. These are fairly rare, but it can happen. <clears throat> now, now, why is it important to know if the eye is going out or eye is going in? Many a time a patient will come and say, Ki squint tha, they had a squint and it's been operated. And many a time I will ask that was the squint going outwards, was the eyes going outwards or were the eyes going inwards? and the parents and the patient have no idea. So that is the time we have to look back at the pictures, uh, pictures before surgery, pictures of childhood to finally know. So it's important to know what kind of squint you have, exotropia or isotropia. So this is very important for you to know. Now the next very important and very frequently asked question is, Kaise hua? Doctor, how did it happen? Now, uh, we have doc MBBS uh, doctors, we have PG doctors, we have super specialist doctors who have been trying to answer this question for years. Why has this happened? There are researchers who are still researching on why does squint happen, especially concomitant squint which is from birth or which is hereditary or which is genetic in nature why does that kind of squint happen and really there is not one answer one good answer many a time we feel that the connection between the right side of the brain and the left side of the brain is not strong and that is why both the eyes don't move together sometimes it is because of some kind of perinatal insult sometimes we will say it's because of prematurity but really there's not one single answer of course, incompetent squint, which happens later in life, which can happen because of accident, which can happen because of diabetes. But incompetent squints are, uh, you will know, it's a sudden cause of squint and for that we can give you an answer. But these concomitant childhood squints, really there's not one good answer. But many of them will say, was it because of television watching? No. Was it because of too much mobile? No. Was it because I gave my child the phone before the age of two years? Wo bahut mobile dekhta hai. Wo minute mobile dekhta hai by eating food. Is that the cause of the squint? No, not really. Okay, not at all. Let's just say. And uh, now the next thing is, is it because of glasses? Now, whenever a person with squint comes, we always check for refractive error or if they have a glasses number. If they have a glasses number, we give them the glasses, but not all squints need spectacles. It is only if you have a refractive error, do you need spectacles. <clears throat> now, the next uh, few questions which patients or parents ask uh, fall in the five stages of grief. Now the first stage of grief, uh, if you know, is denial. So a lot of parents and patients will be like, no, it is not all the time. Uh, we have noticed it just recently. Um, in fact, we don't find any problem as such. 
so uh, of course as a doctor we realize that this is denial and uh, as a, a parents and patients you must realize that you are denying the diagnosis and the longer you deny the diagnosis the later we can start the treatment so uh, dealing with these questions first of all when you say um, we have just recently noticed it it wasn't there before uh, some of the squints like isotropy and all, I know that this must have been there from birth, especially if they have an IO overaction. I know that it's been there for a long time. But a lot of patients will be like, no, it just started just few days back. So we, I like to see the pictures from before. You may also want to see pictures from before and see for yourself. Um, yes, some squints can come up very late in life or uh, later, but still... Uh, and the next question which they say is that it's not all the time. Yes, that is why it's called intermittent exotropia or intermittent squint. Now, the fact that it comes just sometimes does not mean that the condition is not there all the time. So what I say is that the eyes are always in a state of exotropia. The child or the patient is trying to keep it together. So when does this link break? It breaks in the evening, it breaks when they are tired, it breaks when they are weak, it breaks when they are not, uh, you know, when they are not concentrating, so when they are looking at a far distance or they are looking at the TV. What does that mean? That the condition, the exotropia is all the time there. It's just that they are holding it together or maybe you are not noticing it that much because you are not really seeing the person all the time through the day. So really by saying that it's not really all the time, you are denying the diagnosis. It is there, the exotropia is always there. The person is just being able to hold it together for whatever amount of time. And whenever they see close, whenever you are looking at them close, you may not notice it. But you may notice it when they are far off or when they, when they are seeing TV or when their eyes are relaxed. So that's another thing when people say that it's not all the time. Now the next uh, point after denial comes anger. So anger comes on the patient, on the child, on the uh, on the relatives. So it may come out as I told you don't uh, see TV so much. I told you don't uh, uh, you know see the mobile so much. Uh, from today no TV, no mobile. I told you you should eat, be eating carrots. Um, you know then blaming the mother. See I told you you didn't do X Y Z during pregnancy or whatever. So none of this hold any scientific background. Even if you stop TV, even if you stop mobile, even if you have all the carrots in the world, the diagnosis still stands true of squint. So, um, you know, moving on from this anger will take a few days, but this is my part of the counseling that no, this did not cause it. And no, don't blame yourself for it. Don't blame your relatives. Don't blame the child for a diagnosis in which he had no hand to play. The next point comes to bargaining. Uh, again, uh, so patients and parents will uh, start by saying, uh, doctor, will it go away on its own if uh, we don't do anything? Um, child is too young. I don't want to patch. Will not keep the patch or um, will it go away if you put spectacles and this is in someone who doesn't need spectacles or doesn't have a refractive error they'll be like why don't you give a zero number glasses maybe it will go away with the glasses or uh, some will say exercises let's do some kind of exercises and uh, can we do exercises for really young children two years three years less than three years what kind of exercises will, will a child regularly do for seeing any kind of results except for patching exercises uh, so we do give patching exercises if they have spectacle correction we will definitely correct the refractive error uh, both of these are so so important without which we i will never go ahead with any kind of surgical management until we have exhausted all kinds of medical management which is appropriate we will definitely not jump into just surgery but uh, when we do finally say that we we'll need surgery, that means the child has no refractive error or has a refractive error and it is not correcting the squint. And the second thing is that the child uh, has patch. Now the patching why we are doing during squint is really just to come out of amblyopia. 
and also to give the muscles a little bit of uh, movement uh, see that the uh, the muscles can move completely in all ranges of movement when you patch so that is the the reason why we will give a little bit of patching uh, before or after surgery and uh, prisms again prisms uh, may or may not correct the squint completely so when we finally come down to or orthoptic exercises like brock strain or uh, you know other kind of uh, exercises which i may give we have exhausted all of that and then we come to the conclusion that yes the child or the adult needs surgery uh, at that point of time bargaining for time bargaining for with with other modalities of treatment may not be the best uh, option it may just mean that you're denying the diagnosis many a time they will go for ayurveda or homeopathy or go for some other treatment um i feel that uh, you know it's definitely your call you must definitely go find the best options but go with a scientific bent of mind and uh, ask for results ask for you know before and after pictures or before and after reviews uh, be it from a doctor a surgeon or any kind of modality so the next thing is depression when they finally come to the conclusion that yes their child has the squint will need glasses will need patching will maybe need surgery and all of that and the whole weight of the diagnosis comes on you and that is why this uh, video is uh, is being done because uh, in a busy opd it's very difficult for me to hand hold a patient and explain to them that this is very common happens to a lot of children happens to the very very young as well even as young as 3 4 month old will have it happens to the rich happens to the poor and has happened before your child and will happen with after it and there are very very good treatment modalities and they can go through life with very good vision so all of this is what i want to tell you in the video that yes my job is to see that very good vision is there now and is there even after surgery and that is why we will do some amount of patching we will do the surgery leave it have faith in the treatment modality have faith that this is definitely not a lifelong thing we can treat it there are very good treatments for it so i um, a lot of patients will cry when they come to the diagnosis when they hear the diagnosis and they will cry uh, when i tell them the diagnosis they will cry when we are taking the patient in for surgery they may even cry when both the eyes are bandaged and they come out of surgery and it's very scary and um, and a lot of uh, you know there's a lot of emotion involved when we are doing squint surgery but i just hope that this video helps you understand that there is very good treatment yes we can treat it yes they will have very good sight through life if we catch them early if we can treat them early and if we can diagnose it early yes there is very very good chance that they will be almost or absolutely normal eyesight with eyes almost looking the straight and there will be you know you will after everything is done there be a huge relief that you went ahead with it so that is what i would like to tell each patient but it is not possible for me in a busy opd so i hope this video will help you finally and the acceptance so i hope seeing this video gives you a sense of uh, you know uh, positivity that yes there is a condition could we pick it up could we are you know moving ahead with the diagnosis and uh, you know uh, we can do this whatever needs to be done we will do if uh, spectacles are required at a very young age even if my child is 6 months old and needs spectacles yes i will put it for the child yes if my child is only 5 uh, months old and the doctor has said for patching yes i will do it yes my child is naughty and is 2 years old and the doctor has asked for patching i will still do it and uh, if my doctor at the age your child is one and a half years old and the doctor has uh, you know said for surgery yes i will go ahead with it because i believe in the diagnosis i believe in my doctor and so this is uh, the little video on counseling about uh, when you first come to know the diagnosis of squint no matter where you are in the world in the country if uh, if this video helps you uh, i'm glad thank you